Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to get your 3D solid models out of AutoCAD and into Blender for texturing and rendering. This used to be a very simple thing to do when you could just export your model to FBX format and be done with it. But since Autodesk decided to remove the FBX export option for whatever reason, I had to find a different way, and in this video, I'll show you the process, so let's get into it. All right, here's a model of an hourglass that I made, and if I take a look at my layer list, you can see that I have the model split up on four different layers, and each layer is named with a 3D prefix, which is important for exporting. Any layers that don't have this 3D prefix will not export. So you need to make sure your layers are named in this way with the 3D underscore object name. Now, there are four things that you need to know in order to export without any issues. First, make sure your model is sitting on the XY plane. If the UCS is rotated so that the model is sitting on the XZ plane or the YZ plane, the model is going to import into Blender laying over on its side, which isn't a big deal. You can always rotate it back up straight, but I like my models to import as expected, so I always make sure to check and make sure the UCS is oriented correctly and the model is sitting on the XY plane. Next, you want to make sure the entire model is sitting in the positive XY quadrant. You don't want it over here in the negative X or down here in the negative Y or halfway in between because that's going to create issues like um, when you import, you're going to have alignment problems that you'll have to fix and that's a pain. So just make sure that the entire model is in the positive XY quadrant and You'll be fine. Next, you want to make sure to chamfer or fillet all sharp edges and corners. This will prevent shading issues when you import the model into Blender. And finally, you want to make sure to set the facet res variable to 10. I believe it's set to 0.5 by default. And that's not good. If you don't set the variable to 10 before exporting, you'll end up with a really chunky looking low resolution model when you import into Blender. So make sure you set the facet res variable to the maximum of 10 and you'll get a nice smooth model when you import. Okay, so now that we have all that out of the way, uh, it's time to export the model, but you don't want to export the whole model as one object because we're going to be exporting to STL format. And if you try to export the whole model as one complete STL file, all the various parts of the model are going to merge and weld together as one object. And that's going to be a big problem over in Blender. So you either have to manually export each element one at a time or you can use the Lisp routine that I'll be providing in the description below, which will automatically export each object to its own STL file based on your layer names, which is why I said it's so important to name your layers with the 3D prefix. Now, if you've never used a Lisp routine before, just save the notepad file somewhere on your computer where you can easily find it. And once you have it saved, you have to load it so you can use it. So you type appload at the command line and then browse to the file location, select it, and click the load button. Now I already have it loaded, so I'm going to close this window. To run the routine, type expstl at the command line, hit enter, and after a few seconds, you'll get this confirmation down here that tells you the routine has finished. And then you can browse to your folder where your drawing file is located and you'll see a bunch of STL files have been created. 
Now you can open Blender and delete the cube. Go to File, Import, STL, and then browse to the location where your STL files are located. Select all of them and then import STL. And there it is. A little big because my units in AutoCAD were set to inches and here in Blender they're set to meters. So I'll have to scale it down a little bit, but otherwise it's ready to go. And you can see I have all my layers over here. You can turn them off, turn them on, set up my materials, do my rendering and everything. Do whatever I need to do. Okay, that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.